I've got a really great video today. This was actually suggested by a viewer. I'm really psyched whenever I get suggestions. So make sure to reach out if you have a nice problem that you'd like to see me do. And I'd like to title this video, The Real Power Rule. And this is based off the fact that when we take the derivative of the product of two functions, it's like the product of the function f of x and g of x, which we call that the product rule. And then when we take the derivative of a quotient of functions, we call that the quotient rule. Although the power rule is generally not given where we have a function in the base and a function in the exponent, it's a lot simpler. And so maybe this could be called the real power rule where we have a function in the base and a function in the exponent. And so let's see if we can derive a nice formula for this derivative of this kind of function function power and then see how it relates to some more derivative of, derivatives of commonly known functions. Okay, let's get started. So we're gonna start by setting y equal to our function f of x to the g of x, and note that that means our goal is to determine y prime, or dy dx if you prefer that notation. So the fact that we've got a function in the exponent motivates us to take the log of both sides and use so-called logarithmic differentiation. And that's because a logarithm will take the function from the exponent outside. So let's do that. So we have the natural log of y is equal to g of x times the natural log of f of x. So again, we used a natural log rule there. Now let's take the derivative of both sides. So using the chain rule over here on the left-hand side, that will give us y prime over y. Then on the right-hand side, we have to use a combination of the chain rule and the product rule. So taking the derivative of g of x first will give us g prime of x times the natural log of f of x. Then taking the derivative of the natural log of f of x will give us g of x times f prime of x over f of x. Okay, then from there, we can multiply both sides by y to give us y prime equals y. But let's notice that y is f of x to the g of x times this big object here. So let's write that out. We have g prime of x times the natural log of f of x plus g of x times f prime of x over f of x. Great. So I think that would be a nice closed form for our general power rule, or the real power rule like we called it over here. So let's write that out. So we've got f of x to the power of g of x times the quantity. We have g prime of x times the natural log of f of x, and then plus g of x times f prime of x over f of x. Great, so there's our real power rule. So now that we've got that derived, let's maybe look at how this specializes to some things that we would generally see at the beginning of a calculus class. So now that we've derived this nice closed form for the real power rule, let's maybe look at some special examples that relate to what we would have seen in a first semester calculus class. So maybe the very first case that is nice to look at would be if f of x equals just the function x and then g of x equals r which is a real number. Okay but let's notice if f of x is equal to x then that means that f prime of x is the number 1 and if g of x is a constant that means g prime of x is equal to 0. Okay but that means that we have the derivative with respect to x of x to the r. So here what I'm doing is replacing all of the f of x's with x, all of the g of x's with the number r, and just making sure that we get what we should get here. So this is gonna be x to the r times the quantity. So we have g prime of x, which is zero times the natural log of f of x, so that's the natural log of x, plus g of x, which is r, times f prime of x, which is 1, over f of x, which is x. So we're left with something like that. This looks a little bit confusing, so let's take that r times 1 and write it as just r. 
Okay, so now let's notice that this is just equal to zero. And then we can take this x to the r and multiply it through and see that we get r times x to the r minus one. So we have retrieved the standard power rule that you learn at the beginning of the calculus class. So now let's jump into a second case, which will be our last case. And that'll be the case when f of x is equal to a number. We really need that number to be a positive real number for this to make sense. And then g of x equals x. So if f of x is a number, then that means f prime of x is equal to zero. And then g prime of x is equal to one if g of x is equal to x. So let's see. That means that the derivative with respect to x of f to the g will be the derivative with respect to x of a to the x. But using this formula over here, that gives us a to the x power times the quantity. We have g prime, which is 1, and then times the natural log of f of x. Notice the natural log of f of x is the natural log of a. And then we have plus g of x, well, g of x is x, times the derivative of f of x, which is 0, over f of x, which is a. Great. Now let's notice that this turns into 0. And then here, we can take this a of x and distribute it through, leaving us with the natural log of a times a to the x. But now reading off this left-hand side and this right-hand side, we notice that we have retrieved the standard formula for the derivative of an exponential function. So that gives us a nice gut check that this real power rule gives us a nice way to retrieve the derivative of some more standard functions. And that's a good place to stop. Mm -hmm.